Hello there, it's Paul here again. It is the 22nd of September, 2023. I think this is Cancer Update 66. Just let me have a quick look. Yeah, it's Cancer Update 66. Um, this is gonna be a very mixed video. I've got some very mixed news uh, to talk about today. So I'd like to start with the happy stuff. So the happy stuff is I'm wearing a poison shirt and that is for um, four different reasons. One is I'm currently putting poison into my body with my fluorouracil. It's partly because one of my favorite bands is, which is this is actually the logo for, is Poison. And you might know Poison from two of their um, best known songs, which was Unskinny Bop and Every Rose Has Its Thorn. And the funny thing about Every Rose Has Its Thorn is that is one of the reasons that my escort name became Thorn. So um, Poison as a band um, resonated with me a fair bit. But also one of my other favourite um, acts is Alice Cooper. One of Alice Cooper's biggest songs was called Poison. And of course, being a raver from the 90s, The Prodigy was also a really, really big influence on me. And The Prodigy also had a song called Poison. So there are four reasons that I'm wearing this shirt today. And um, uh, I hope you liked at least one of those reasons. Um, if, if, if there's anything, please just go and uh, listen to The Prodigy's version of Poison because it just makes, it rocks my world every time. Because I just, uh, you know, it's, it's that, 90s techno um, beat that just, just gets me tapping my toes every time. Uh, so that's that part of today's um, update. The next part of today's update is my tumour numbers. And this is where uh, the tone of this video is going to change dramatically. So this is probably going to take up the whole screen. You know what? I won't even bother to move sideways. I think this needs to take up the whole screen. Um, these are the cancer numbers, and as you can see, they're diabolically bad. Um, my numbers have jumped north dramatically. And if you remember when we did my ascites um, video, I think it was only, only yesterday, and we no, two days ago, and we looked at the difference in my girth. I was going up by two centimetres a day um, per day for several days in a row, um, sort of three and four days ago. And I made the postulation that it looks like when you have ascites, that generates more ascites. Now that I've seen my tumour stat numbers, I can say that that's actually not what's happened. What has actually happened is the tumours in my body have gone mental. And that is why I was generating so much ascites. If I've also done a different um, thing. Now, I'll just pop this down the bottom of the screen. So I'll put my head high on the screen. This is my ascites drainage journal. So you can see as uh, time has gone by, uh, it's kind of up and down to be honest. The, the really astounding figure is the figure at the end, which is that um, since my first ever drain, I've had over 37 litres um, drained out of my body. Um, and for those of you familiar with the metric system, I'll I'll write up, maybe I'll write up in this corner over here how many fluid ounces or how many gallons that is. Um, but I can tell you in, in metric, um, that is an astounding amount of fluid. Over 37 litres has been pulled out of my body already and there's more to go. Now, let's now talk about uh, the realities of what those mean. If, if, you've, if you've followed every single video I've ever written um, or ever produced, uh, you'll know that when my um, CA199 score was 3,900, the surgeon in Perth effectively, um, well, not effectively, he outright refused me the, um, the major surgical operation to um, operate on me, which is called CRS plus HIPEC, which I won't go into now because it turns out that's going to be a big part of our discussions going forwards. Um, but look it up if you want. I'll put some links down below. But um, when my CA199 was 3,900 and that particular surgeon put a laparoscopy camera inside me, he effectively declared me um, too far gone to operate on and he, and he recommended me go on chemo. 
Now that I've gone on um, six rounds of chemo and my CA199 has actually gone up, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that he would refuse me again. So I'm actually not even going to bother to contact him um, for another staging laparoscopy. As it turns out, uh, because I um, explored that uh, Bromac trial option in Sydney, I ended up making contact with a PMP surgeon over in Sydney that operates out of the St George's Hospital in Cogra. And he was of quite a different opinion to the, to the doctor in Perth. And he basically said, Paul, even from here, if things get worse, please get in contact with me because I believe I will operate on you. So things have got worse. Um, I am quite sure the Perth surgeon won't operate on me and I will absolutely be contacting that surgeon in Sydney. Uh, uh, I'm going to write an email over this weekend that I'm hoping that person will read on hopefully Monday or Tuesday next week. And if you remember, next Friday is my PET scan. Now, if... I don't know, I don't know how next week's going to play out, but it's possible that, for example... They, that doctor might say, Paul, I can fit you in for a staging laparoscopy on, let's say, Wednesday. If that happens, I'm going to be flying over to Sydney as quickly as I can, getting that staging laparoscopy on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday or Thursday or whatever, flying back to Perth and having my PET scan in Perth because I've already got it booked. It's already paid for on Medicare or through my private health insurance and all the rest of it. But the thing is, it's booked and it's booked through... Murdoch Hospital, who I've got now um, quite a history with, I'm not now going to turn around and say, nah, I want to do it in Sydney because I'll be in Sydney. I'm going to fly back to Perth and have that. Now, I want to kind of put something out there to you guys. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it is something that I'd like to um, ask you about just to see whether it's a possibility for me. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, there's a... V at this stage, if things go well for me, I'm going to end up having, I, I, I'm going to be pitching to have a CRS plus HIPEC operation at St George's Hospital in Cogra in Sydney. I do have a nephew that lives in Sydney, but he's a reasonable distance away. He lives in Liverpool, which as I understand it, is a reasonable distance from Cogra. They're both in Sydney, but they're like, it's a fair distance. So what I'm wondering, because I, I do feel like you guys actually really care for me and I'm starting to feel like even though you know me a whole lot more than I like you, I am starting to feel like I think I do like you guys because you're, you're very, very kind to me with your words. And I'm wondering if there is anyone out there that um, lives fairly close to St George's Hospital in Cogra and for bonus points, if you are a healthcare worker that lives fairly close to St George's um, Hospital in Cogra, and you've got a spare bedroom for maybe two days, then um, maybe those could be the two days before I'm admitted. Just to give you, I'll give you a very brief um, outline on the CRS plus HIPEC because it is pretty devastating. Um, the first thing I need to tell you about it is it has a 1.5% fatality rate. So 1.5% of people that go in for this operation come out dead. They do not survive the operation. That's the first thing you need to know about it. It's known in surgical cir cir circles as the MOAS, which is the mother of all surgeries. It takes a minimum, if things go perfect, it takes a minimum of 12 hours. Most of the time it takes 15 or 16 hours, but the operations have been known to go to 18 to 19 hours. At the end of that, the patient is put into an induced coma because they just aren't well enough to, to be recovered at that point. So they are put into an induced coma and depending on whether they were at the 12 hour mark or the 18 or 19 hour marker, um, that induced coma is between one and five days. When they come out of that induced coma, they then go into recovery and they're in recovery for between one and three weeks. And then through, at the end of that process, they then have to deal with however much of their um, ab abdomen is left. So they might have one kidney removed, they might have half a liver, 
Um, they, they almost certainly have had an appendectomy. They will, will definitely have had an omentectomy. Um, they may have had a, a partial, um, uh, you know, bits of their colon removed, and they may have an ostomy bag, a colostomy bag, a stoma, stoma bag. Um, they may have um, several gastrointestinal um, functions that now operate differently. So, um, uh, and you don't know until you wake up. You you sign a form that says, "Take what you have to take, and I'll deal with it." So, um, it it it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Uh, you might die on the table, and if you don't die on the table, you might wake up with um, significant um, changes in lifestyle, let's say. Um, so, if you do live um, close to St George's Hospital in Cogra, and particularly if you're a healthcare worker there, I'd love to hear from you. I'm only going to need... Um, a few days before I go in and maybe one day when I come out because for the rest of my stay at St George's, I will be in St George's. Um, so I really only need time to arrive and basically time to arrive and then time to get ready for the airport at the end. So I don't need to stay with you for very long. Um, but if I, I could stay with you, that would that would be great. I do also want to visit my nephew out at Liverpool, but um, it may just be logistically easier if, if I'm close to, closer to St George's. I have worked out a way that you can sort of secretly get your email. There's two ways you can actually secretly get your email address to me without posting in the comments. One is if you join the POG family um, Discord server. Um, I'll put a link down in the description. If you join that Discord server, you can um, just tag me in a message and it will end up in my queue and I, I can read it and you can put a, and you can then direct message me and you can you can give me your email address that way. Another really cool way to do it is I also have my Substack and when you join Substack and you subscribe, I actually get a copy of your, your email address. Now, I don't spam you with it because I'm not a spammer. It's not in my nature to, to spam. But I do know your email address when, when you do that. And what you could do, for example, is you could say, hey, Paul, I subscribed on this day at this time and the first four characters of my email address are this. I could then look that up and I actually know what your email address is so I can directly email you if you do that, okay? Um, please only use that trick if, you're, um, if, if it's for this reason of accommodation. If you're doing it because you want to have a, com a side conversation with me, I need, I need you to understand that I'm one person and you're more than 15,000 people and I just I do not have enough time in my day to have that many personal conversations. I, I just don't. It's not that I don't want to. I do. I just can't. I, I have a real lot going on and um, I cannot be giving out my personal email address to, to 15,000 people, okay? So there's two ways to get hold of me and um, uh, look... Some really real stuff is happening for me now. It's going to be a really tough week. Um, so I'll try and post every day because obviously the news is coming really thick and fast right now. Um, but if I don't, please don't don't panic about me. It is just that I am super busy. It is also that um, I'm quite unwell. You know, like yesterday I was vomiting my guts up. The day before that I was super unwell just with the ascites. The day before that, I was sick with something else. Well, now I know I was sick because my tumour numbers were going through the roof. So don't panic if I don't post every day, okay? And don't don't even panic if I don't post for three or four days. I am trying, okay? Um, yeah, don't don't panic. If if something terrible does happen, Caroline does have the, the logon details to my laptop. She can get in. And if if I do let's say die, Caroline will get on there and let you know that, okay? I don't believe that's going to happen in the short term, but if it did, that'll happen. So if I haven't posted and Caroline hasn't posted, I'm not dead. You don't need to worry about me, okay? Um, so that's where we're at for today. Please remember to click the care button. The care button helps me because basically that gets me more subscribers. And I need more, well, I want more subscribers because I want to push my... Um, uh, my message further, 
I feel like I've got a worthwhile message. And it would be nice to meet those new subscribers while I'm alive, not dead. So, so click the gear button, okay? I'll talk to you later. Thank you.